I like to finish. <laughs> um, Don't we all? <laughs> um, <laughs> Hi, and welcome to the Savage Podcast. I'm Rose, also known as Cheap Lazy Vegan on YouTube. And I'm Daniel, one of your favorite guest stars on Cheap Lazy Vegan's YouTube channel. We're two friends who love to talk about the latest trending topics. So get comfortable and join us while we give our savage take on just about everything. You are currently listening to the previous episode of this podcast, but if you would like to listen to this week's episode and get some exclusive content, go over to patreon.com slash the savage podcast. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode. Another episode of the Savage podcast. (laughs) We are... uh, (laughs) Guys, my throat is a little bit sensitive today, so please excuse me. Too many I might have uh, to talk extracurricular accents. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, guys. Rose is uh, potentially coming down with something. I is. But she'd be taking her vitamin so, C. So, I did. Mm-hmm. I might need to talk like with this very soft and sexy voice today. Oh, I quite like it, Rose. Yeah, you like it? It's very... Oh, <laughs> oh you like it? Oh, you like it? <laughs> oh, stop! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's giving me weird tingles, oh, and I don't know how it? I feel about it. Oh, oh. <laughs> are you questioning your sexuality? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, um, yeah. wow, that was a weird start. That was a weird intro. <laughs> We're both in a weird, weird uh, uh-huh. headspace. We're both right so like just all over the place yeah. that I think we're going a little cray cray. Mm-hmm. Anyway, guys. Welcome to another episode. Yes, welcome to another episode. <laughs> Before we jump in, just a reminder to join our Patreon, yeah. patreon.com slash the savage podcast. What do they get, Rose? They get bonus episodes every single month just for Patreon members. Mm-hmm. Every episode is ad free and you get every episode a week earlier than everybody else. Okay. So check it out. Patreon.com slash the savage podcast. Love it. Thank you so much, Rose, for that. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, <laughs> before we get started on the stories, I thought we could well you You've kind of almost finished Baby Reindeer, <laughs> and I thought we could, you know, do you want to talk about it, or should we wait till you feel like you're more, you know, ready to talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think I would like to wait until I'm ready to talk okay, about it, Danny. Okay, it's, a, it's an emotional roller coaster, guys, <laughs> the show, so watch Baby Reindeer, yes. and then we'll talk about it probably in, like, <laughs> in like a, a month's month. <laughs> time. So yeah. you got lots of time to watch it, guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's funny because um, I was in Fairmont for the weekend with my family, mm. and <laughs> my brother really wanted to watch Baby Reindeer. Uh, and it's a little. Uh, it's it's intense. It's not something you want to watch with your family. So maybe? me and my mom and my brother watched it together. No. Yes. Why would you do that? You already know what it's about. I know, but I don't know. I'm a glutton for punishment, I guess. And my mom, <laughs> my mom was like, "This show is horrible." <laughs> I was like, Mom, it's really deep. There's so many layers. She's like, it's terrible. I can't watch it. <laughs> well, to be fair, there's only like a few scenes where it's like quite sexually explicit. There's a few sexually. But those scenes are very sexually Oh my God. And explicit. super intense. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Okay. Not an easy watch, is it? It's not. So guys, brace yourselves. Watch mm-hmm. Baby Reindeer. Baby Reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll actually talk about it in like a month's time. <laughs> yes. When when me and Rose are back from travel. Oh God, there's just so much going on. There'd be a lot going on, Rose. Anyway, you guys, shall we jump into the stool, right? We shall jump into. We shall we jump shall into. Jump into the stool, right? Yeah. So there's been a TikTok potential TikTok ban. Well, this is what people are saying. Yeah. Basically, it's, it's so in the U.S. There's like a whole controversy around like the fact that TikTok, because I guess TikTok is owned, kind of part owned or fully owned by like a Chinese company. Yeah. Um, called B- ByteDance, the Chinese-based owner of TikTok. Um, so basically, for some reason, this is like a big issue in yeah. the U.S., you know, there's nothing else to worry about. Yeah. You know, TikTok is the biggest issue that the U.S. has. Mm. So basically, President Joe Biden signed the TikTok divest or ban measure into law. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> where basically... What is the, like, what do you have to do? So basically what they want is they want ByteDance to sell their stake mm. and divest their ownership of the app within 12 months. Otherwise. Or, or face a U.S. ban. Now, the reason they want to do this is Well, because, this is what they say. Yeah, this is what they say. The reason they're saying that they mm-hmm. want to do this is, and again, this is what's so crazy is because there's a lot of like Chinese-owned companies that are yeah. operating in the U.S., like that have huge U.S. presence, 
But anyway, the thing with TikTok is the the whole controversy is they're saying that because it's owned by a Chinese company, obviously the data is going back and forth from China to the US and all this stuff. And they're saying that they could use the data as like a propaganda tool for communism. It's so stupid. I know. And like they're just That's saying, definitely not the reason why they want to ban it. I know. And they're saying it's a it's a national security risk mm. to have the the data of US residents in in China. Such bullshit. It's it's honestly, guys, this stuff is so stupid because like the amount of data share that goes on between yes. companies nowadays like all over the world like it's crazy it's everywhere exactly. all our data is sold everywhere 100 percent. and like the fact is the fact that like pisses me off is the is the fact that like there are already so many chinese companies that operate in the u.s uh-huh. tiktok just happens to be one of them yep God damn. but i think it's like I, I think it's like a lot of reasons they just mm. like really don't like tiktok because i think one of them one of the reasons is because um, on TikTok, for example, there's like a lot of, I mean, this could be just my speculation, yeah. but because there's a lot of like pro Palestinian voices on TikTok mm. and it's like very, thanks to t- like platforms like TikTok, yeah. you know, the Palestinian side, which normally doesn't get that much coverage by yeah. mainstream media is getting a lot of, um, not only coverage, but support mm. from young people. I think that's like a big reason why they don't want TikTok like they want to censor TikTok essentially. I, I also think that a big part of it has to do with like, um, I started watching this <clears throat> and again, this is also speculation, but I started watching this documentary on Netflix. I didn't finish it, but it was kind of about um, social media in general, not just TikTok, right. but it was about Facebook and all this other stuff and about how a lot of the like elections and like political things that have happened in the U S have been like, R- not rigged but like heavily oh yeah this, this documentary came out a long time ago yeah i just haven't yeah. finished it and and obviously tiktok plays a part in that as well to be like yeah you know <laughs> <laughs> to be like what daniel <laughs> <laughs> to be like you know <laughs> you know no to be like uh, you know <laughs> what am i trying to say guys i don't um, know daniel it could be influential in like you know if there's like a election which sure you know <laughs> I mean, I don't know, Dad. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to use your words. I'm. You know, this is a po- <laughs> this is a podcast. I will have to use my words at some point, won't I? <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know. But but I I do I just think this whole this whole situation where the U.S. is just like saying you know they're just swinging their power and saying you have to divest otherwise we're gonna ban TikTok because yeah. we don't want you know um, U.S. residents data going over to China. Well, I'm like, okay, well if you don't want U.S. residents data going over to China, maybe you should look at all the other fucking yeah. companies that are using. You know, it's like for example. Even these companies, if you think about it, if they have call centers, for right. example, in India, right? right? Like, let's say they have a call center in India, which a lot of big companies do nowadays because yeah. it's like cheaper, offshore, whatever. Just by that nature, yeah. it means that your data is already being shared in India. Sure, because sure. Because the call center reps have to have your data to, to do their sure, job. Sure, sure. So things like this, um, you know, it it it's going to pass your data over. Like if you order stuff from China to be shipped over or you're ordering from a company that's outsourcing to China, like your data is going over there. Yeah. It's whether, so stupid. Exactly. Whether you like it or not, like this is just what's happening. <clears throat> what do you think that, what do they think they're going to do with the data? <clears throat> well, again, they think that it's going to, it's going to be used as a propaganda tool. In what way? I don't know. So stupid. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Um, it's stupid. It's dumb. This is not something anyone should be focusing on. What do you um, think is going to happen? Do you think like, I don't think. I don't think they're going to ban it. There's no way. It's way too popular. Because mm-hmm. like, it's like, it's like they're at a stalemate because ByteDance, who's the Chinese owners of TikTok, mm. said that they have zero plans to sell TikTok, right. obviously. Yeah. And the US has said, sell TikTok in 12 months <clears throat> or we're going to ban you. So crazy. So in twelve months' time, I wonder. I, I wonder if that's going to impact. That won't make it. it that won't <laughs> impact. That won't, well, huh? <laughs> that won't impact us in Canada, will it? Like we'll still have access to TikTok. I think we'll still have access. Who the fuck knows? Yeah, I, guess, I don't know. Yeah, all I the TikTokers know. are going to lose their jobs. <clears throat> What's going to happen? Goddamn. Well, you know, I was seeing this thing on TikTok. Just like uh, to digress for a moment, mm-hmm. but like a lot of like creators on TikTok, depending on where you are, it's like some of them, like even if they have huge followings, make like no money. Like I think it was in Australia or something. They were saying like compared to like their U.S. counterparts, because U.S. Right. TikTokers can make quite a lot. Because U.S. has uh, the creator fund, yeah. or whatever it's called, mm. where you get paid for like your views. I don't think it's like a lot. Yeah. 
but you still get paid to some degree yeah. whereas canada doesn't have it either yeah so like if we post some if i post something on in canada where where we are yeah and it goes viral i don't make anything out of it the yeah. only way you can make money on tiktok is if you get sponsors right which i think is kind of crazy this is where i'm like okay a lot of these social media platforms exist solely from users putting content on mm-hmm, there, right? Like mm-hmm. the companies itself, really, they're not really putting their own content on there. Yeah. They're flourishing because of additional users putting content out there. And I just feel like, especially like platforms, I know like, for example, Instagram, like you get, again, you get um, paid promotions, that sort of thing. But like, there's a lot of ads on Instagram as well now. Yeah. There's a lot of these like ads that come <laughs> up and stuff. And I'm thinking like they should they're not going to do this, but like there should be a way for creators that are like on pages to, to monetize. Like that's one thing I think is really good about YouTube Yeah, yeah is yeah. in terms of like the, you do get like the creators do get ad revenue. And if you have yeah. a big following on YouTube and like massive views and stuff, you actually make good money mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. you actually get a share of that ad revenue. Whereas Instagram and TikTok and these other platforms that still have ads on them, Facebook as well. I know it's like, it's harder to monetize that as a creator when actually they're literally making money selling ad yep. space on c- content that you're creating. <clears throat> yep. Exactly. It's so, so crazy. And selling your data mm-hmm. to China. <laughs> to China, apparently. 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 So we'll see what happens. This is going to be an interesting one. I think, you know, obviously 12 months is a long time, but it goes fast. It goes fast. We're, ar- we're already, guys, we're already almost in the month of May. Oh, it's this so year, crazy. Which is insane. Um, But, you know, 12 months goes in the blink of an eye. And let's see what happens. Let's see if this stalemate comes to head and let's see if the U.S. actually bans TikTok. Can you imagine? God, but then they're going to just be like, it's like, okay, they're against like us is always like, Oh, freedom of speech, Mm. freedom of whatever capitalism. (laughs) Right. Yeah. It's such bullshit. If you're going to ban something like TikTok, which is such a big platform where people used to share information and do whatever stupid shit. Okay. So I don't know. We'll see. Time will tell guys. This is, this is when we'll, we'll all have to keep our fingers on the pulse and we'll find out pretty soon. But then I wonder if like, if it does get banned in the U S if people can just do like, you know how like WhatsApp was banned in China. They, they like, well, that's the thing. China bans a lot of social media platforms as well. Yeah. I think like you're not allowed Facebook. Yeah. Um, so they have their own like platforms. Yeah. Um, but some people still do it through VPN. Yeah, I think you can still like there's yeah. a there's a way around it. Because I have a couple friends in China and I we we have a group chat on WhatsApp, and they still are in the group chat. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So they must, but I think that they did mention that it's hard harder for them. Like they don't get the messages right away. They have to like VPN and do some right. some shit in the background. Who knows? Just to get access to these like platforms. So stupid. It's crazy. It's actually crazy. But anyway, <clears throat> time will tell, guys. Let's we'll see, see what, what happens. happens. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, let us know if you think that there is an ulterior motive as mm. to why they want to ban TikTok. Mm. Maybe they just want more money from this platform yeah. that's doing so well. Mm-hmm. You know, they want to keep that money in the United States of America. You know, you know the, what I'm saying? You know, saying? United States of America, they just want more money. Mm-hmm. Always mm-hmm. want more money. Money, money. Or maybe one day they will ban it and then the U.S. creators just won't have access to TikTok anymore. Yeah, that's true. And then they'll have to create a different platform just yeah, for the like U.S. Because China also has their own... Um, TikTok? No, I mean, they obviously use TikTok, yeah. but like they have their own, like, for example, I think like different social media platforms, Right. but it works in China because there's like literally like a billion, whatever people this is true. in China. Yeah. Whereas US, like, yes, there's a lot of people, but it's not like as big. True. Cause if you think about it, you're right. Cause in the US there's what, there's still a lot of people like 340 million. Yeah. 300 something million. <clears throat> so you have 340 million versus a billion people. Mm-hmm. Like you get a billion people on a, on a social media platform. Not that everybody would use it, but you get half a billion people and you're good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Anyways so guys apparently this is a bit troubling oh god um cancer diagnosis both in the u.s and around the world are growing more common among adults younger than 50 mm. by 2030 one recent study estimated the number of these early onset cancer diagnoses could increase roughly 30 percent worldwide Dang. And the number of people who die from their conditions could rise by about 20. So what is going on here? So most striking finding in the last decade has been this rise in incidence rates among young adults. Because mm. I guess cancer is usually, and it still is, most commonly diagnosed among people older than 65. Yeah. And in the U.S., only about 12% of cancers are diagnosed among adults younger than 50. Yeah. So, but now that number of young people getting cancer is growing. Right, right, right. So I wonder why, <clears throat> you know, why, I mean, I, 
there's a number of reasons why yeah. I think this is happening, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So obviously, you know, they, they, they say there's so many things that we're doing kind of like wrong. And I think it's ex- it's exacerbated over time, right? So for example, fast food increase, the sure. fast food explosion, eating shitty food, eating highly processed food, eating highly sugar food. Um, also, um, all of our exposure to like radiation, it could be that, you know, it says it's likely a mix of things, eating lots of processed foods, yep. not getting enough exercise. I think that's a huge factor. Yeah, huge. Cause the sedentary, yeah. people s- are sedent- sedent- sedentary, sedentary <laughs> lifestyle. Daniel, I know English is your first language. It's mm-hmm. very difficult for you. <laughs> what, was the, what was the word the other day that I was having trouble with? <clears throat> the, the, oh, the tr- trad wife. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that is hard for you. <laughs> trad wife. I got there it. you go. You got it. Um, drinking too much alcohol. Uh Oh, <laughs> damn rose who'd be who be drinking too much alcohol not me <laughs> um are all risk factors for cancer yeah um and all of those issues are widespread in modern life you know what i think the biggest one is though i mean all of these are bad i do feel like uh, and i could be wrong about this but i feel like the 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 crux of this is our generation now versus kind of our parents, even our grandparents' generation, we're becoming way, way, way more sedentary, right? We're not going to say that again, Daniel. What, what are we becoming? Sedentary. <laughs> yep. Sedentary. Sedentary. There sedentary. you go. Um, because if you think about it, so many people now, and I, I like, I even just like look at my, like, you know, where I work and stuff. It's like people drive into the office. Yeah. People, um, especially in North America, right? Drive to the office, park, walk to their desk, sit at their desk for eight, eight and eight plus hours, get back in their vehicle, go back home, cook dinner and watch TV. If they're going to cook dinner. Yeah. Or order food (laughs) and then watch TV. And this is like becoming a huge problem. Yeah. And I feel like, I even feel like even though like, you know, maybe our parents' generation were a little bit better in terms of like, they walked a bit more and like they valued like going for walks and stuff. And I feel like our generation it's becoming less of that. And we're eating like, especially the processed foods too. Yeah. In a sense that like, it's like in the last like 15 years, the um, ability to order food like online and stuff yes. has, it, it, even for me, it's like, I never used to, honestly, I never used to order food as much as I do now. I blame COVID. Yeah. I think like post COVID, yeah. it's becoming so common. But also I think the thing is, and I agree with you on that. Mm-hmm. I think after COVID, pre-COVID, it you was know still what? there and yeah. it was, people were still doing it. But I think post COVID, it yeah. like went out of control. Well, cause like I remember pre-COVID, I would order food like maybe, maybe like once or twice a month, like right. actually ordering it into my house. I would go out for dinner a lot. Yeah, yeah. Like I would go out with friends and do all this other stuff, but I never would like be by myself at home or sitting with a friend at home and like ordering a lot of food. It was more like if I had a friend over, maybe we'd like yeah, get yeah, some it was pizza. Like a special thing. Exactly. Whereas now after COVID and I think you're right. Cause COVID like all the restaurants were closed. So people were ordering so more people got used to ordering food. Exactly. Yeah. And also I think people realize, and I've realized like, how fucking easy it is yeah. to like, I could be sitting here with Rose right now, get my phone and be like, you know what? Yeah. Let's order some pizza. Let's order some pizza. Literally two let's seconds. Order some Chinese food. Cards linked. Everything's linked. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Don't even Done. need to talk to somebody. Nope. Don't need to talk to somebody. Yeah, don't have to call the place. Don't need to interact. Yeah. Don't need to do anything. Don't even need to put your card information because it's all yeah. saved on the fucking app. <laughs> yeah. And you're good to go. And then t- 30 minutes later. Yeah. <laughs> You don't even just need to see the driver. They nope. can just put it on, in front of your door. Leave it outside your door. Open it up. Your food's there. And now on these apps, they like they remember your order. Of so course. You, if you have like a regular order, you could just literally press like order the same thing. Yeah. Done. Yeah. So easy. And it says actually that a 2019 study um, found that many of the cancers growing more common among U.S. young adults are linked to obesity, yeah. which now affects about 40% of U.S. adults under 40. Yeah. 40 percent that's insane like let that sink in obesity guys 40 yeah. percent of u.s adults under 40 are obese <clears throat> and i think the thing is we've talked about this before guys like again we're not um one of the the challenges about the society that we've <clears throat> we have constructed mm-hmm. is the fact that we have to go against the grain mm-hmm. to stay in shape we have yeah. to go against what's easy and what's you know fast and quick and everything else and that's a problem. Like we have to go out of our way to be healthy. Yeah. And so a lot of people don't do it because, you know, inherently I'm like this too. Sometimes I'll be lazy or I'll be this and that. And it's actually harder to like be healthier than ever before. Mm-hmm. 
It says to help lower the risk of cancer, everyone can benefit from evidence-backed health advice like eating a balanced diet, getting enough exercise, not smoking or drinking heavily. But ultimately, each individual's chance of getting cancer is different. So obviously, there's also, you know, genetic factors Mm. and all of these different things. But I think like with the genetic factors and your lifestyle factors, those combined is usually what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you're genetically predisposed to cancer, but you lead a really healthy lifestyle, then the chance that you're getting going to get cancer might be lower significantly. Whereas like if you are already, if you have cancer in the family Mm. and you already have a sedentary lifestyle and eat like shit, then it like increases significantly. Yeah. So goddamn. I was actually watching. And again, this is another, another documentary I didn't finish, which is, which is very unlike me. I usually finish, yeah, which shows when I watch. You usually them. finish, hey Daniel. Yeah, I like to finish. <laughs> um, Don't we all? <laughs> um, <laughs> God damn, Rosie B. Kinky as hell. This would be a know. PG podcast. Daniel, we're talking about shows. Yeah, we are Aren't finishing we? shows. We are, yeah, and we all like to finish a good show, you know. Um, <laughs> God. But uh, one of the one of the other documentaries I was watching is called like something about your gut, gut health, or okay, something. Yeah. And they were talking about how like each person has, and it's actually so fascinating, like this microbiome yes. inside of our body that's like fluctuating. And actually part of the reason why a lot of people get like IBS and all these other things is because these micro microbes, they need to eat and they need to like yeah. process things. And if you're not giving them the right substance, mm-hmm. they'll actually start eating the walls of your stomach. Right. And you're like, not the stomach, the intestine, like the mucus and stuff. Right. Cause there's like a mucus layer sure. that protects them, your body from these, these microbes. And, Anyway, it's so fascinating and they say so much of this stuff. This is where I got to in the documentary. So much of like cancers and what goes on in your body are linked to your is gut. linked to your gut. Yeah, health. your gut's really important. Yeah, and, and they're saying like it's the most um well the one girl she's obviously studying it, so of course she'll be a little bit biased, but she was <clears> like, This is one of the most revolutionary and like um important fields of medicine and study right now. Right. Is, is around your gut hole gut hole. <laughs> your gut hole. Your gut hole. Your gut hole. <laughs> you know that gut hole. God damn. <laughs> And, and how it impacts so many different things. Yeah. Obesity. Um, yeah. All of this stuff like uh, is linked to what's going on in your gut. God damn. Yeah, yeah. That's why I believe that you have to eat very like a variety of different foods. That's what they were saying. Yeah. Um, Cause then that like that. Yeah. That makes like the variety is good for your microbiome yeah. or whatever. This is what I heard. Yeah. So this is why a lot of people, for example, like a lot of people that followed, let's say like a, like a raw vegan diet, yeah. they end up having a lot of issues with their gut later because they're only eating like a very specific, small, group small of group of foods because yeah. like you're already, you're limited to like what fruits and vegetables, which are great for you. Yeah. But when you're not eating other things, like your gut is not going to be used to eating things. So let's say they like one day decide to stop being raw, for example, yeah and they start eating like i don't know tofu or like beans all of a sudden their gut goes insane yeah because they're like what the fuck is yeah, this? what is this food that i'm not used to yeah so like yeah um it's a big thing it's huge mm-hmm. it's, it, it, mm-hmm. and they were saying on this show too like one of the things is what's really good about like us like eating vegan yeah is your some of the foods that are really important mm. for um your microbiome are like high in fiber and stuff yes fiber fiber is huge and they were showing like how they showed like a piece of like broccoli and visually like going through yeah. the intestine right and how the it, how it like takes a while to break down and sure. it's, that's better yeah, yeah, yeah versus some of these other like high sugar high stuff that like gets like broken down like instantly and goes rushes into your bloodstream right. and it doesn't like properly like sure feed your microbiome or whatever <clears throat> yeah you have yeah. to eat high fiber foods yeah lots of fruits and vegetables people mm-hmm. and this is beans. what beans bean, beans beans the mm-hmm. musical fruit mm-hmm. beans beans the musical fruit have you heard that saying no <laughs> beans beans the musical fruit the more you eat the more you poop toot toot <laughs> <laughs> i can't believe you've never heard that that was I've like a little that. that was like a little kid kid uh nursery rhyme or whatever but i did not speak english when i was a child daniel oh, true okay maybe there's mm-hmm. maybe there's one in korean but it, maybe yeah who knows <laughs> But, but yeah. yeah, so yeah, that's another factor. A lot of people are not eating enough fiber. Mm. People are eating like shit. Yeah. People are not moving. Yeah. Okay. People are just sitting down on their phones all day, mm. depressed, stressed. And that those are all causes of uh-huh. cancer, potential I causes. I don't know how, like, honestly, I just, I don't know how people do it. I guess, I guess if you're used to that, then your body gets used to it. But like for me, like this weekend I was in Fairmont, I went to this like cabin and stuff and it was a relaxing couple of days, went to the hot springs and stuff like this, but didn't really do that much like activity. Right. And towards the end of it, I was feeling like a little bit antsy. Like I was right. like, I need to go for a nice long walk or I need to like yeah. do something. Cause I was kind of like just in the cabin a lot. Right. So like it's, I don't know how people like, if I did that for like three weeks, I would just feel like a piece, piece of shit. <laughs> 
Yeah, but yeah, people are just used to it. Yeah. Like even even when I tell people, this is what shocks me, guys. This is how crazy our society is nowadays, mm-hmm. I feel like. And it's a norm. Like I'm not blaming anyone for this. It's just kind of like what we've created. But like honestly, the amount of people when I talk to them and I tell them that I walk to work. Yeah. They get like shocked. Well, at first they're like, oh, well, so you must live really, <clears throat> really close to the office. Right. And I'm like, well, it's about a, like a 30 minute walk. And they're yeah. like, <gasps> I know, 30 right? minute walk. And I'm like, are how you, is that? How is that bad? I know. I'm like, are you fucking kidding I me? Know. It's a 30 minute walk. That's nothing. That's like, absolutely nothing. Okay. If I was like a two hour walk there and back, <laughs> yeah. fine. I would even be like, whoa, that's really yeah. long. But a 30 minute walk? Like, yeah. really? What is wrong with people? I know. They were like shocked. I know people get shocked too. I know. I'm like, yeah, I walk like, you know, 25 minutes here. And they're like, 25 minutes? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. People pay to go to a gym. And I think, you know, there is definitely, like, I like going to the gym as well yeah. for spe- specific exercises. Um, people pay to go to the gym. And you go there for, like, an hour, let's say, and then you do whatever exercises. Yeah. Why not also incorporate exercise outside the gym or even just have exercise outside the gym? Yeah. People think, like, this is how fucked up our society is. It's like, unless you pay to go to a gym, it's like, you know, no other exercise counts or you don't have to exercise. Yeah. But instead, actually what they say is like, even if you go to the gym mm. for like an hour a day, let's say it's still like, if you otherwise lead a sedentary lifestyle, you're still at risk for a lot of health issues Of course, because we're really not supposed to be sitting around for the majority of the day and then only exercising for an hour. Yeah. Because if you think about it, there's like what, 16 w- awake hours in a day, let's say, assuming you're sleeping eight hours. Yeah. That's 16 hours of your day, right? If you exercise for one hour, that, that's still better than most people, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, which is sad. If yeah. you, like, go to the gym for an hour, great. It's still better than most people. But that's only, that leaves you with 15 extra hours. Mm. So, like, realistically, you're probably better off not going to the gym. I mean, of course, like, if you can go to the gym, great. Yeah. But you're probably better off not going to the gym and then just moving a little bit for, like, I don't know, four hours, like, a little bit at a mm. time. You know what I'm saying? If you're just, like, or, like, walking to work. Like, these things, like incorporating those things into your life yeah. is actually much more beneficial for your health yeah. than just going to the gym once a day and otherwise sitting still. And they say these small incremental yes. things actually make such a huge difference. Cause like you're, you're right. If you started incorporating, if you live close enough, obviously, but like if, if you could walk to work in within 30 to 40 yes. minutes, fucking do it. You start doing that. Maybe the first week or two, you're like, Oh, this is so tiring. Mm-hmm. But like, honestly you get into a routine. And now for me, like unless the weather is completely yeah, yeah, yeah. shitty, I walk to and from work every single day. Yeah. And like, that's something that on top of, okay, I go to the, yes, I go to the gym too, but that's separate. But I, I, I always like, and it, because of my walk to and from, um, work every day, I do at least a minimum of 10,000 steps, yeah. Yeah. which again, isn't that much like 10,000 is like, okay, you should probably that's do that. Probably the bare minimum. But I remember we, we read this in the podcast and I can't remember what it is now, but it was like the average person does like, I don't know, 3000 steps which a day. Which is so crazy. Or maybe it was 5,000. No, no fi- I think it was no, three. It was like probably two or three. It was yeah. like something shocking. It was shocking. Low. And I just remember being like, Holy fuck. So just, just incorporating those little things into our like day to day. Like, you know, for example, if you live a 10 minute walk from the grocery store yeah. and you're only buying a few things, go walk there, yeah. walk there, grab them, come back. Like just doing that little bit. It's like moving your body. And also it's just like helping us for preventative of like cancers. Yeah. And like, also think about it, like our muscles and our bones and everything, they need to be moving around yeah. and it helps them to be more functioning. Right. So yeah. like, as you get older, you want to be doing these things, especially so. as you go to get older. And actually yeah. I saw this thing that was really fascinating. It was like somebody talking about how your leg muscles or like, you know, you doing leg exercises, like strength training or whatever yeah. is like a huge indicator of like your, I don't know, longevity or something like this, because there's so many factors, right? Number mm-hmm. one, obviously, like, obviously if you work out your legs, that means you can, you're, you have stronger legs. Yeah. That means you can walk more. If you can walk more, that means that you get better cardiovascular, yep. uh, you know, so all of those things have, there's like a, it's like a ripple effect, right? Mm. So yeah, you have strong legs and then you walk more. And as you get older, especially because you're losing muscle mass, the more that you, like that becomes more and more important. Yeah. And obviously when you walk more, that maybe means that you're interacting with people more. Yeah. So you're talking to people more, you're outside more, you know, you're the, the you know, so your overall life is yeah. probably better because now you're able to walk. Whereas like, if you're like, you know, if your leg muscles are so weak that you can barely walk, then you're just gonna be sitting around all day. That also impacts your mental health, yep. your stress. Um, and also when you get older, uh, a lot of older people, uh, they may, they have a higher chance of injury. Yeah. So when you injure yourself, if, if you have strong legs, strong muscles, then you have a less, a higher chance of like 
get getting better or whatever yeah. and it's not going to imp- impact you as much so all those things they say yeah this is like super important your yeah. leg muscles so I'm, I'm sure like walking has a lot to do with your leg muscles yeah. as well but also like strength training and things like that so yeah you just we don't realize how these tiny things that we think are insignificant mm. are actually very very important yeah and it's just even you know, and that's such a good point it's like mm-hmm. just making those incremental changes yes and and honestly like especially with walking i just i don't get why so many people seem to be i love walking it. i do too i like i really enjoy it like yeah. if it's a nice day out like i do not want to be on the bus i don't want to be doing yeah. i don't want to be inside i want to be walking everywhere mm-hmm. like the only time i don't like walking is if it's like fucking blizzarding outside and sometimes exactly. i still walk yeah so God, we, we got to walk, people. I know. Okay? Get it's out there. very important. Get your steps in. Get, to, get your steps in. Get some walk. Another, walk in. Get, <laughs> get, get some, some walk. Get some, get, get some walk. Get some walk. <laughs> um, one other suggestion, and then we'll move on to the mm. next story, though, guys. So walk where you can. And another thing that I saw or, like, read about how you can, like, increase your steps and stuff. And this is, like, little, but, like... If you're going and you're driving, you have to drive to the grocery store. Mm. You have to drive to wherever. Park at the back of the parking lot. Yeah. Park at the very end of the parking lot. And then that way, at least you have to walk a bit more than if you, you know, like have to park right up at the front. So you have limited, you know, little things like this throughout your day. It actually adds and you'd be surprised. You'll be like, oh my God, I'm at 10,000 steps. Yeah, exactly. You know, so there you go. Little things like that. Mm -hmm. Very important. What are we going to do about our alcohol consumption though? Mm. (laughs) That is a challenge. You know, you can't win win them all. You can't win it all. You know what? We exercise. We eat pretty I healthy. I do everything else right. Yeah. Except for the alcohol. Yeah. What are we going to do? That's a, that's a good question. That'd be a good question. Well, speaking of health. Yes. So USDA updates rules for school meals that limit added sugars for the first time. For the first time. That's the crazy thing. This, this is, <laughs> th- we're both too, just like, what? Too little too late. I Already know. 40% of... Young adults uh, or young people Mm -hmm. uh, under 40 are obese. So, And I think part of the problem too, first of all, like this is too little too late, but like it's good that they're doing it now. I'm, you know, this is good, but like it's shocking that it's taking this long. It's it's so shocking. So bad. And I think, I always think back and we've talked about this in the podcast before too. Like even growing up here in Canada, it's like you go into high school and all over the high school, there's fucking vending machines of like Coca-Cola, potato chips, all this shit. Like these companies pay or, you know, yep. have some kind of sponsorship or something with the fucking schools where they are allowed to have their vending machines in there. And well, that's it, not even just vending machines. We've talked about in the cafeteria, the food, the too, food yeah. again, this is maybe it's changed, but I doubt it if this, I mean, obviously we're talking about Canada here, so it's a little bit different, mm. but I mean, we're not that much better. We're a little better, but like not yeah. significantly better. But, you know, I remember like in high school, all the food options were like mac and cheese, uh, chicken hot fingers dogs, and fries, chicken fingers and fries, curly yeah. fries, yeah. pizza, like nothing healthy, Poutine. no vegetables. Yeah. And that those were the options. Right. So yeah. it's like it's absolutely insane that, you know, this you're feeding this to teenagers, young adults, young kids. Yeah. And it's just like. What do you what do you think's gonna happen? Yeah, well, there, and there's two well, there's multiple problems, but two mm-hmm. that come to the top of my head. First of all, is number one, a lot of these foods, like these this junk food, as we know, it's highly addictive. Like, yes, it, it has these like things in it that make you. Because like, don't get me wrong, you know, I'll go on a binge sometimes, and I'll have like <laughs> you know, fucking Beyond Burger, mm-hmm. some fries, and I'm like, oh, it's so fucking good. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, like I, I I have to control myself, obviously, because you want to eat it all the time. But I'm an adult, so I have that like you know more of that mindset. Your impression, impressioning, impressioning, <laughs> impressioning. What are we impressioning? You're Daniel? impressioning young children, <laughs> or you're. Do you know the word? What I'm trying to say. I I, know, I understand what you're trying to say. Yeah. So you're doing that to young kids, whatever that <laughs> word is. And and the thing is, is you're teaching these bad habits at a young age that becomes even harder when you yes. get older to kind of break out of those bad habits. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the thing. Whatever you do when you're a kid, it's so hard to change. We, mm. I feel like your childhood is like literally everything. Yeah. Your mental health, your physical health, everything yeah. stems from your childhood. Yeah. So if you don't have parents that can teach you to eat healthy, for example, yeah. like it's going to be so much harder for you to eat healthy, yeah. especially when you go to school and they still feed you the same bullshit. Yeah. And even worse than what you would eat at home. You know, a school is somewhere where you're supposed to be, you know, they should be behaving better than parents, really, because yes. these are educated people that are supposed to educate children. Yeah. Okay, parents are not actually like, you know, they're not trained to do that, really. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So you should be going to school expecting that the kids will learn the right thing, but instead we're still feeding kids, you know, shit. Shit. Well, and they, yeah. I remember there was a really good show 
um, that was in it was based in the UK because the UK also had this problem. Right. Where, oh yeah, UK is also a big yeah big issue. Yeah. So this this famous chef called Jamie mm-hmm. Oliver, um, he went to like a bunch of schools mm-hmm. and like looked at their um, diet plan and their like you know the the shit nutrition basically they're feeding <laughs> kids. And a, a lot of the argument back back then, and probably st- because this was like a few years ago, probably still the same argument now is it's around cost, right? They're like, oh, it's so much more expensive or it's so much more this or that. And he actually curated menus specifically for school kids, like for in, for this particular TV show that actually was like half the cost of what right. this junk was costing, right? So he was like showing them, he's like, not only can we have hearty meals for these kids mm-hmm. that are full of nutrition, nutrients, full of good food, not that hard to prepare, mm-hmm. you know? Versus what you're serving them right now, and for uh, half the cost. Yeah, maybe it wasn't. Crazy. Maybe it wasn't half the cost, but like right, it was a like third less or, of the cost. Yeah, it was less. So it just shows goes to show you that it, it is possible. But anyway, sorry. We'll, we'll right. So this story, mm. the nation's school meals. So we're talking about the U.S. here. Will yeah. get a makeover under new nutrition standards that limit added sugars for the first time. Mm. The U.S. Department of Agriculture announced Wednesday. The final rule also trims sodium in kids' meals, although not by the thirty percent first proposed in twenty twenty three. So it continues to allow flavored milk, such as chocolate milk, with less sugar, mm. um, rather than adopting an option that would have offered only unflavored milk to the youngest kids, blah, blah, blah. Mm. So the aim is to improve nutrition and align with U.S. dietary guidelines and the program that provides breakfast to more than 15 million students and lunches to nearly 30 million students every day at a cost of $22, $22.6 billion a year. Holy shit. Okay, so. It's huge. I'm just shocked that, okay, so the limits on added sugars would be required in the 2025 to 2026 school year, starting with high sugar foods such as cereal, yogurt, and flavored milk. So I guess, and, I, and I've heard this before from, mm. especially from like friends that have moved to the US, they said that like, again, we're in Canada here, so I don't think we're that much better, yeah. but apparently the food quality is even worse in the US. Yeah. So like they have less restrictions on things like this, you know, added sugars, yeah. added, so like apparently they just like pack in all kinds of random shit into your meal so when we talk about cereal yogurt and flavored milk you wouldn't think like oh my god it's like super high in sugar yeah. but i guess it fucking is well it is it, yeah it, and the thing is going to especially like cereals and stuff so like maybe we are a little bit better than the u.s yeah but we're not that much but we're not that much because mm-hmm. actually in the uk so although the uk has its own problems and whatever else they actually have guidelines in place already yeah, yeah, yeah. for sugar content so a lot of the cereals that we have here and stuff like they don't even have them in the uk because right or if they do they have like a reduced sugar content sure. Because they already implemented this because, again, like <laughs> you're allowing these companies where or we are allowing these companies to just pack these cereals and this stuff yeah. with like to as much sugar as they want. And the reason they're doing that is because it's addictive. Yes. They're like, yeah, we want people to, to love our cereals and let's make them as sweet and delicious as possible. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And of course, the kids get hooked. Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. you're your kid like. These foods are, even for adults, it's hard to, you know, control yourself. A hundred percent. So it's like if you feed them to kids, of course they're mm. going to be addicted. They're going to want to have these foods more. And then that causes all kinds of issues later yeah. on down the line and yeah. even at that moment. So anyways, I can't believe this is finally happening, yeah. apparently. But t- too little too late. And it sounds like, you know, it's not going to be f- as fast as mm. possible. It's gonna, not even going to be until 2025, 2026 school year. So it's not even well, this year. Well, isn't that next year? Yeah, it's next year. <laughs> Still, yeah, that's, it'd be, that's it'd be, next it'd, year, Daniel. It'd be a year. It'd be, <laughs> it'd be six well, months I don't, away, <laughs> seven months away. Yeah, but they're not going to be like, well, let's change everything immediately. They're yeah. going to need some time to change things. This is true. Then. They need a little bit We're of time. We're talking about food here, okay? They can't just be like... <laughs> Anyways... <laughs> So, uh, yeah, maybe this will make some kind of difference. Maybe it won't. Who knows? I mean, I I do feel like the school cafeteria programs in Canada, I don't know what it's like in the UK anymore. I don't know. Well, actually, I don't know what it's like in Canada. I haven't been to a high school in (laughs) so so many fucking years. I know. That's why I'm like, maybe it's gotten better. Maybe it has. Like, I would I'd 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 be interested to know, like. (laughs) <laughs> has it does anybody um that listens to this podcast like maybe their high school teacher let know. us know the options in the cafeteria i doubt it, has gotten, I doubt it. yeah because like i i just feel like also too part of the reason was partly uh, they they argue costs but i think a lot of it is just like it's just so easy yes it's convenient it's like to make a grilled cheese it's like yeah yeah, exactly. There it's you go. easy. It's easy to make taste good. You don't have to do much with it. Yeah. It's, if it's like fried food, of course it's gonna taste delicious. It's exactly. Fried. If it's yeah. covered in cheese, of course people are gonna love it. Yeah. If it's sugary, of course people are gonna love it. It's yeah, yeah. very easy to make it taste good, but it's just not like nutritious, and it's not. 
like there's very little like a grilled cheese for example there's such little nutrients in there it's just like bread it's just bread and fat yeah that's what it is like there's you know it's just not anyways yeah it's a problem it is a huge mm-hmm. problem don't know what going to happen. Hopefully, you're right. I hope I hope this is a step in the right direction, though, in terms of, like, mm-hmm. reducing this content. And then maybe this will spill over into, like, uh, a commercial, like, you know, cereals and everything that's yeah. being sold in the supermarkets to say, actually, you know what? These are marketed at children. We've decided, actually, we're, we, this needs to change. Yeah. You oh, know? God. So instead of maybe focusing on random shit that the government's focusing on, focus more on this kind of stuff, mm-hmm. too. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, continuing on. Yeah, continuing on the, continuing on the, continuing on the conversation. (laughs) Uh, I don't know what's going on with me today, guys. So here's a story. Daniel, would you like to do the honors? I will. So I saw this, this came up on my, I think it was on TikTok or something. Uh Uh-huh. So it's not necessarily confirmed. Nobody knows for sure if it's going to happen. It's been like Mm -hmm. tentatively announced and people don't know who is going to be doing oh, this. I either. mean, obviously, because it's like... It's secretive. Mm. So apparently there's a group of pro footballers, um, so soccer players for those of you in North America, um, but footballers planning to come out as gay. Oh, next. so is this in the UK? Well, it would be more... I think it's more European. Oh, I think interesting. That, yeah, the thing is, I think that a lot of the... It could be... I don't actually know, but I think it's more in the... So, oh, it's a report in Germany, yeah. which claims that there's a group of players that are planning to collectively come out as gay next month on the same day, May 17th. Yes. Lord Jesus. So it's a part of initiative to encourage players, coaches, referees, and officials to come out with several clubs supporting supporting a project created by Marcus Urban, who came out as gay during his career. So I think part of the reason they want to do this, one, obviously solidarity if you're coming out in a group is not just targeted at one person yeah but i think one of the issues especially with football well actually a lot of professional sports sports in general yeah sports in general heteronormative super masculine all of these things yeah. that make it not so much a safe place for mm-hmm. safe space for people in the lgbt community and you often hear and this is like honestly like nine times out of ten the people that come out as a professional athlete is after they retired so like right. they'll be in the when like it doesn't impact their career exactly anymore. when they're in the NFL when they're like pro level doing all this stuff they won't say anything and then as soon mm. as they retire then they're like oh by the way I like men or I like women or like whatever I feel like that's more common than people because there's not very many professional athletes these days like in certain sports like football for example that are actually openly gay right until they like come out so this I just was, but also like I see you know this is good i think it's a good thing yeah but at the same time do we need to know what everyone's you know sexual orientation is i don't think that we do this is the thing yeah. I, I, one I, one day hopefully we get to a place exactly i think i think in my ideal world guys in a beautiful <laughs> daniel world utopian society U- utopian society created by daniel yes it'll be a great place for us <laughs> um don't know if i want to live there daniel no, i'm just kidding <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go. Hi right, guys, see you. Um, so in this in this in this space, it, like in this perfect world, nobody would need to come out because there would be no preconceived notions about sexuality. Like people would just be who they are, and and it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter exactly. So like for example, if you like somebody, you would just go and tell them that you like them, and if they happen to be straight or gay or whatever, they would just tell them, "Oh, sorry, actually, I am only interested in men, or I'm right. only interested in women," and it wouldn't even be a thing. And we're like, "Okay, cool, awesome." Exactly. And there'd be no fears. There'd be no prejudice. There'd be athletes like uh, uh, you know, uh, famous actors and movie stars yeah. and all this stuff, and none of them would have to say anything. Yeah. Now I think the that right now, it's getting better. But I, I, I think that's a good question, Rosary. Like, why why does it matter? What does it, you know? Like, I do think it's a good thing be- within the sports thing just yeah. because of the fact that it is toxically masculine. Yes. There's all of these, um, and, and gay people are shamed. And yeah. because of that, I think it is important to, you know, show that there are gay people within sports. Yeah. This also encourages other gay people that want to get into sports to feel more comfortable. Yeah. So I think, like, uh, like I, I'm, I feel more positive about the situation. Right. But when I take a step back, I'm also kind of like, who the fuck cares? Exactly. Like, let people be gay. Let people 100%. be straight. Like, do whatever you want. And I agree with that. Like, I wish <laughs> yeah. I wish that's where we were as yeah. society to be like, hey, you know what? You know, and it's the same with actors and movie stars and yeah, singers like, and all this. why do we care? Exactly. Does <laughs> it really matter who they date? No. No. But I, I think because of where we are in society, yeah. it's, it's really, um, you know, to have these, like, positive role models in life, you know, to for, like, young LGBT people 
LGBTQ youth to have people to look up up, up to like professional yeah. footballers and all this stuff in a time where or in a society and a world where it's still not 100% accepted, right? Yeah. If we were at that place where it was like 100% accepted, no one gave a fuck, we wouldn't need this. Yeah. We would be well, like, you know what? This reminds me of that TikTok I sent you and Christelle when you guys were both like, Ew, why does this need to be filmed? <laughs> I didn't say that. You definitely said that. <laughs> no i thought it was cute the reaction you're like oh the reaction's cute but it didn't need to be filmed <laughs> you were just you were just like okay so basically i said this tiktok <laughs> of this mom it was yeah. really sweet and it i was, was just sharing a sweet thing <laughs> in our group like chat yeah. and it was like this mom and like she wasn't showing the kids faces or anything mm -hmm. but she was basically like telling kids like explaining to her kids that are probably like i don't know in elementary school yeah or it something. sounded like they were like six yeah. or seven and she was like, listen, like in, you know, there are families where, you know, being gay is not accepted. And the kids were like confused as to why. Yeah. Right. And, and they were like, what, what do you mean? And she was like, yeah, sometimes they like get disowned. And then mm. they were like, oh my God. Yeah. And they're like freaking out, which I thought was really sweet because like, it's not, you know, it's something that we just think is like normal. Yeah. We think it's normal for like kids stuff to come out and parents, it's always like an issue. Mm. But then like maybe the next generation, it's, it's getting better. Yeah. I sent it to this chat and then like my friend Christelle, I think you were just like, like piggybacking off of what Probably, Christelle was yeah. saying. Okay. But sometimes you can just, you know, have your own opinion, Daniel. Okay. <laughs> Christelle Savage was like, hours <laughs> out today, guys. Oh, God well, damn. Christelle's like, oh, why does this need to be filmed? And I was like, well, it's just like, what? like, just take what it is. It's nice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's not, I think she's showing that, you know, maybe, you know, the, the, the kids of today's generation are a bit better. Yeah. It's showing, you know, like, you know, some kind of, uh, like hope. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe that's why it's filmed. And then Daniel's like, well, this is cute, but it doesn't need to be filmed. And I'm like, I'm never sending you guys anything ever. No, fucking please again. do. Please Jesus do. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay. Why does anything need to be filmed? How, why does this need to be filmed? Huh? Huh? <laughs> Hey, Rose, have you got that off your chest now? Yes. Okay. Moving on. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was really sweet. And I agree with you. I think it would be great to get to us. Oh, it was really sweet, but it yeah. just didn't need to be filmed. Nobody needed to see that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it will be good when we get to a place, though, when it's like, you know, this doesn't need to happen. But it will be interesting. So May 17th, guys, is supposed to be the date that this group is supposed to come out. Come out. Together. Together. So I don't know how many sports teams. I don't know if it's all mm. just German players. I don't know if it's like. Yeah. Who it's, knows? It seems that it's in Germany. Yeah. But who knows? Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll find damn. out. We'll find See, out. Here, listen to this. It's been 10 years since Thomas. <laughs> hits hits burger. <laughs> Thank you. Hits, hits, hits burger. Hits burger. Oh my god, German is hard. It is came out as uh, came out as gay, but there are still officially no homosexuals in officially. Obviously, there right. are um, in male professional football in Germany. Right. Yeah. This is just showing you, like, you have these huge teams and all this stuff, and yet there's like nobody out. And it's yeah, but again, it shouldn't be a thing, but it is a thing. It's, yeah. it's all very confusing. It is. Because it's like, again, at the end of the day, who the fuck cares? Because it has nothing to do with the yeah. sport. It has nothing to do with your performance. Mm. It's literally your private life. Yeah. We should not care about this. The issue, the issue, but the is, issue is that people do care about yeah. it just in the wrong way. Exactly. And, and there are people that have come out before and it's ruined their careers. Exactly. This and is the like, issue. That's, that's the problem, right? Like, it's like, you know, it wouldn't be a problem. Like I, I personally, if I was a professional football player, I'm like, who the fuck cares if I'm dating a guy, but then I'm going to yeah. be out, out in public with my like husband or right. whatever. I'm going to get and photographed. Then you get shunned and, and then people are like, oh, you're fucking faggot and all this yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, you know? Oh like, God damn. Damn, I know. God damn the F you word. Use the F word. God damn. No, I hate that word. Oh damn. Oh. I hate it. Anyways, you know? yeah. um, so yeah, uh, good news. I mean, we we have a lot of like relatively. I mean, not a lot. There was like two pieces of good news today. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's, there's another one more story, Rose. So one more story. Yes. We've talked about Canadian grocery stores and taking the, the piss, taking the absolute, absolute piss, piss out of the customers. Yeah. And uh, basically, Canadian shoppers are frustrated AF. Yeah. So they are launching a grocery chain boycott. Yes. So they've selected a few grocery stores. Um, I think one of them is, uh, oh yeah. So there's a subreddit apparently called Loblaws is out of control. <laughs> Oh my God. We should have looked at this, this subreddit. Yeah. I want to see it. So it says members of the community have taken the time to organize a movement with the goal of showing the grocery giant they've had enough. So if you don't know, Loblaws is like a giant grocery chain in Canada. So Loblaws yeah. owns a bunch of like 
grocery stores. Yeah. So there's like Loblaws itself and then mm. there's like Superstore. There's like, I don't know. They own like a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. And so it's it's a huge problem. You know, it's like a monopoly situation. Not a monopoly, yeah. like an oligopoly, oligopoly. or whatever well, it's Well, you called. know what people were doing too as part of this boycott is they actually... Listed all of all, the listed And showed all the brands. Yes. They're like, so this is what Loblaws own, so we need to boycott all of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it says, yeah, there's like a movement that is being organized mm. and... So it's funny. It's like deals that aren't really deals. So this just gives you an example of <clears throat> some of the stuff that's been going on, why people are getting pissed off. I mean, it's all about prices, obviously, but it's just like the fuckery that's going on, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's like somebody actually posted a flyer from 2019 and compared it to our prices today and we were absolutely losing our minds about it. Yeah. Cream cheese back in 2019 was two for $5. Now each one is going for five forty nine. dollars Right. You got sugar back in 2019 going two for $4. Now three twenty nine dollars each. Right. So like little things like this. And then I do see, and I don't know if it's Loblaws or who, but I see this. I haven't done this myself, but I'll see people on TikTok going to grocery stores and they're like buying something, you know, like the stuff that's weighed. Oh yeah. I saw that too. Yeah. And it'll be like, oh, this is like two pounds worth of stuff. Yeah. So it's weight. Okay. So when something is weighed, right. And it says on the packaging, it already has the barcode on it yep. and it has the weight. So let's yep. say it's two pounds. It says it's two pounds on the packaging yep. and then it's the price for whatever two pounds is. Yep. And then they'll weigh it mm. and it actually weighs like 1.5 pounds. Yeah. And that's with the packaging and everything, right? Yes. So, and, and it gets even better. So there's actually a lawsuit going on. And it had to do with all of this stuff, right? So basically, I can't remember what it was. It was like a meat product. It was like ground beef or something. And it was like before this this thing of ground beef was supposed to be like $10. And then they did like some kind of promo where it was mm. like supposed to be a little bit less. But then they like somehow fudged the like weight stuff. So it looked like right. you were paying less. It was like less per pound, but the package was the same price. What the fuck? Yeah. So there's like a whole, I think there's They're a class doing action. all loss. kinds of fucked up shit. And I mean, and, and to be honest, guys, like there was a recent thing as well about um, grocery stores in Canada. I can't remember the whole story, but they were actually caught um, price gouging or doing some kind of price thing with bread. This was a couple like a, year, a couple of years ago. Okay. And there was a class action lawsuit and they actually had to pay some money. Oh. Because they were like, I can't remember what they were doing, but like something with the bread. I don't know. Look up the story. Be like Canadian grocery stores and bread. And there was like some kind of right. thing that happened because it, it, this shit's getting crazy. So I, it's really interesting because um, obviously I have my YouTube channel, right? Yeah. So I've got years of, you know, random videos that I've made. Right. And I was watching recently. I don't know why I was like looking back at one of my videos recently from like, I want to say it was like 2018 or 2019. Yeah. And it was like a video where I did celery juice for like a week. Yeah. And basically it was like, I drank like celery juice. It was like trending at the time. Right, I don't right. know if you remember. Yeah. And I was like drinking like a shit ton of celery juice every day. Not a shit ton, but like a good amount. Yeah. And so in the beginning of the video, I'm like, I bought some like organic celery and I'm like complaining about how expensive it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So one like big bunch, it's like in like a little packaging and it's like, yeah. I was using one per like juice or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, it's like so expensive. And I think it was like $4 for like one bundle. Yeah. To me, that doesn't even sound expensive anymore. No. Do you I know was like, much, oh, that's like nothing. Do you know how much they are now though? I have no idea. Yeah, but it'll like, be interesting because they're probably like, like $8 now. Exactly. For me, it's like now I think $4 sounds cheap. Yeah. Like it sounds cheap because it's like, but at the time I thought those was like ridiculously mm. expensive. I was like, oh my God, I'm so broke. I'm buying celery. Yeah. It's crazy because a lot of my grocery purchase is like produce because I do eat yeah, a lot yeah, of produce, yeah, yeah. right? And it's like even the produce, because normally produce is like, generally it's like a bit cheaper than everything else. You know, you're not buying all this like mm. processed shit, mm-hmm. you know? And I've just noticed like- No, that's like, not true. Produce is expensive. I know. Well- It's getting more and more expensive. It's getting crazy. Like even just like simple things. And, and you're right. I think it's like hard because we forget what prices were in 2019. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's so long ago. I'm like, I don't remember what things were. Yeah. But like little things I remember. Like I remember like a thing of mushrooms used to be $1.99. Right. It's- Three ninety nine or more now. Yeah, which sounds normal to me now, which is crazy. Yeah, which is like insane though. But like mm-hmm. that's that's what's happening, and it's like you know what? These prices got inflated, but they're not going to come back down. Nope. Ever. Nope. <laughs> so. So we better make lots of money, mm-hmm. Daniels. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So I guess they are. I mean, I don't know how big this boycotting thing is. Let's be honest, because it's yeah. like a subreddit. Yeah. Uh. But basically. It's going viral on TikTok too, though. It's going viral on TikTok. Yeah. Uh, it says it's unclear at this point how many people will take part in this boycott. Uh. But there's been a lot of support online. Mm-hmm. Especially on the West and East Coast. So I don't know where they're going to shop instead, but yeah. uh, so Loblaws owns stores like Loblaws, No Frills, and Canadian Superstore. 
Yeah. And the boycott is asking for the company to reduce prices by 15% and for member only pricing to be removed. Uh. Um, Okay. And yeah, so it's, it's, it's bad. I mean, the thing is though, the sad part is Loblaws is supposed to be one of the cheaper ones. I know. Cause like Safeway, ridiculous. Yeah. So expensive. It's crazy. And you know what, you know what's interesting? I can't remember if it was Loblaws or somewhere else, but they were starting to do like, because you know how a lot of grocery stores have implemented self scanners. Right. So apparently because of these increased prices, well, that's a part of it, but because of inflation and people getting more and more desperate, a lot of people, it's easier to like steal stuff from the right. self scanners. Yeah, Cause yeah, you yeah. can like, you can like scan a lot of things, but then kind yeah. of forget to scan a few things. Or like, you know? or you scan something like, let's say it's produce yes. and then you buy like organic celery and let's say, and you just put it as regular celery. Yeah. Well, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Guilty. No. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. Um, well, at this point, I'm like, fucking hell. They're stealing from you. You're stealing from them. Exactly. Good for you. <laughs> so, so I can't remember if it was Loblaws or something. And I don't know if this ever happened, but they were mm-hmm. like talking about it, that they were going to um, have like self scanners, but only you had to like pay like a membership fee to like use the self scanners or something oh my God. because like too many people were stealing. And some companies were like, we need to just get rid of the self scanners right. because too much theft is happening. Oh, interesting. But it's funny because the original reason they implemented those self scanners is to not pay cashiers. Exactly. So, so now there's too much theft happening, but uh, somehow their profits are still rocket high. S- yeah. Yeah. S- sky high. Sky so high. it's kind of like, okay. Yeah. Like, yes, theft is shitty, yeah. but you're still super profitable. Yeah. So what's going on here? I just, it just never ceases to amaze me. Now, like I used to like, honestly, buying mm. groceries in 2019. Well, I didn't, I was buying them like more when I moved back 2020, 2021 early. And like, I never thought it was that expensive. I was like, actually like n- some things were a bit pricey, yeah. but overall it's like you could buy a fair amount of stuff for like 20, 30, 40 bucks. Sure. Now it's like, it's every yeah. time I go there, I get shocked. God, I guess my services are more important than ever as cheap, lazy vegan. Uh, I yes. gotta do more uh, cheap, you know, cheap recipes. I think you need to do another like sh- live for like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, thirty dollars or Ugh. twenty dollars a week. I need to up thing. it. You have to up it's it to so like forty. It's so hard now because when I first started my channel, my YouTube channel, basically, like I was living in the UK, and mm. then, God, when I look back at some of my grocery hauls back then, yeah, I bought so much food for like. 40 pounds. I know it was groceries are, were cheap. It at that was time. dirt cheap. Like yeah. I would get, and I think the UK is cheaper in terms of groceries. It still. Was. I don't yeah. know about right now, Yeah. but at the time, for example, I would get like, like a big bag of pasta for like 20 P yeah. which is like what? Like 30 cents Canadian. Yeah. Like 40 now maybe like, a, yeah. a box and the same amount of pasta here yeah. would cost like $2 at a minimum. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. whereas before maybe I could get one for like a dollar. Yeah. Now it's two, $3. So again, at the time, I would get like thing of pasta, 500 grams or so, something, and mm-hmm. it was like 20p, 30p. Yeah. I would get like a can of tomato stuff for like 20p, 30p. Yeah. It was so fucking cheap. Yeah. It and was insane. Yeah. It was absolutely insane. Uh, I don't know what it is now. I'm, I think it's still cheaper than here. Yeah. Um, I don't know what's going on. Canadian groceries are have already been, I think, always been a little bit more expensive than the UK. Yeah. But now it's gotten like exponentially worse yeah well two things on that i remember when i was living in the uk and i would buy like a, th- a head of broccoli at the time it was like 55p i think for right. like a head of broccoli and i remember at the same time because we were talking about this i'm pretty sure it was like five dollars here or something yeah 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 something and that was and that was back in the day other thing too talking about canadian groceries there was another person again tiktok <laughs> um this person on tiktok in hawaii they, oh. got, they got to Hawaii and they were going through the grocery store and being like, oh my God, look at these prices. And then like all the Canadians in the comment section were like, these are normal prices in Canada. <laughs> like this is like standard. No, I thought Hawaii was a lot more expensive. Yeah. Oh God. I mean, I don't know where they were in Hawaii, yeah. but like groceries in Hawaii, everything in Hawaii was so expensive. Yeah. Like I remember seeing like a block of tofu and it was like, like five or six US dollars. Oh, Oh, serious it was disgusting i mean the blocks of tofu have gone up a lot here too i know but like it's not five or six u.s dollars i know i think it's like 3.99 now jesus christ it's crazy yeah well and now actually what's happening because again people are like stretched thin and things are getting so expensive yeah and you know how like you know girls get their lashes done yeah and some lash depending on like where you get your lashes done yeah it can be really expensive yeah and like for example you could get like the the first initial um, lash appointment would be like, let's say two hundred dollars. So expensive, and then like a fill might be like a hundred, if not mm. more. And so people have now started like, you know, doing their own lashes at home mm. and just like doing de- even like nails and stuff. There's like a lot of things that I don't know for some reason for the last like I don't know ten years or so these like 
self maintenance, um, like beauty, no beauty maintenance, maintenance has gone up in terms of like, like I, I swear to God, when we were like 10 years ago, yeah, very few people were getting their lashes done. Uh, very few people got their nails done on a regular basis. Yeah. Now it's like almost like a, like a, the norm is someone gets their lashes done and their nails done. Right. Okay. It's like less common to not have those things done. Even me, like I used to never do any of these things. And now I like, well, I don't do manicures all the time, Yeah. yeah. but now I like get my lashes done and get my nails done. Mm. Whereas like before I didn't used to do that. So those things like kept, kept creeping up. Yeah. And, the, and now pe- more people are getting Botox and fills. Yes. Again, don't know where this came from. I don't know if it, I think it's social media that has yeah. some, something to do with it. Like we're all comparing ourselves to each other and like, we're all just like, Oh my God, that girl got Botox. I need to go get Botox. Right. Right, right, right. So all those things crept up and without realizing we're spending like hundreds of dollars a month just on beauty, beauty maintenance care, yeah. alone. So now I think we're starting to see that maybe the pendulum sw- swinging the other way where we're like, okay, now we can actually do this at home. Yeah. Fuck the nail salon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fuck the lash tech. Let's just do this shit at home. Yeah. 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 So I'm going to try to do it at home. I've got to maybe next home. month. But I mean, this is the, this is the reality. I think we're going to see in the next little while, just because of the rising mm-hmm. costs and how expensive everything's getting more and more people are going to opt to do these things, right? Yep. Like less people are going to be, and, and I think, I think a lot of industries have already started feeling this, but like, you know, less people are going to be going out to eat mm-hmm. less people oh, already. Yeah. Definitely. And like less people are going to be going out to the bar to drink. Like mm-hmm. there's just, people just don't have the money anymore. Well, the bar thing, I don't know. I mean, yeah. the, the one industry that will always thrive is the alcohol industry. Let me Thrives tell you. in a recession, <laughs> thrives in a depression and thrives when it's booming as well. But, but they do say that young people like, maybe Gen Z young, like really young people, they're not drinking as much. Yes. I remember, I remember us reading yeah. about this. Yeah. So that's like, that's another thing. So the one industry that's always relied on, yes. you know, young people getting fucking hammered. I don't know. They might mm. also be suffering. People are not drinking as much anymore Got because it. they can't afford it. They're socially awkward. Yeah. They're, they just want to stay home and do nothing. Yeah. I would hate to see you guys <laughs> in my lifetime. Yeah. Tallying up how much I've spent on alcohol. Oh, Daniel, I don't think we want to know. I don't think we want to know. Because oh, be God. Like, it would be disgusting. I'm more concerned with my health. <laughs> That's true. I'm like, I spent so much money. Yeah. I'm like, oh, God, what am I doing to my body? Yeah. Oh, Jesus God. Christ. Do I need to do another detox? Maybe. Do I need to do dry, uh, dry May? <laughs> yeah, right. You're going to the UK, Rose. That's I not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Um, but let's, let's see what happens if this, if this boycott goes through. I mean, to be honest... Um, for me, I'm not gonna have to do anything because I don't shop at any of those stores anyway. <laughs> yeah. So I'll already be part of the boycott. Um, it will be interesting to see because I thought about this, and you're right. Like, for example, like as as a collective shoppers, right? If we decide, hey, Loblaws, I mean, all the grocery stores are fucking us to be yeah. honest. But let's say they decide Loblaws, we're gonna boycott in May. Everyone stops going to Loblaws and just goes to the other stores, like mm. you know, Walmart and wherever else you can buy groceries. You know, um, so they start going to all these other places boycott Loblaws for a month, Loblaws would feel some pain that month. Mm. Their profits would be down. Sure. It would be a shit month for them. So they'd want to try to attract. And like, you know, we could, like we as a collective, but it would be kind of like a pain, but like could jump, you know, like, you know. Right. We boy- could jump. But then I'm I'm confused because let's say for May, it's Loblaws. Yeah. Then June, it's Walmart or I don't know, Safeway. Yeah. So then we're just jumping from store to store, yeah. increasing profits for, for other stores. For that period. For that period. Yeah. So I don't really understand. Because the thing is, groceries, it's like, it's a necessity. So it's, it's it's very difficult to boycott. Like, it's yeah. different from boycotting, like, Starbucks, for example. Yeah, like, yeah, nobody yeah. needs Starbucks. This is true. And so it's like, I don't know. That's, that's, that's what's, like, confusing to me. Yeah. It'll be hard to see... You're right. Cause like the unfortunate thing is it is a necessity. Like yeah. what can we do? We need to eat and like, we need to get groceries. Like yeah. at the end of the day, it sucks. It sucks that it's a private company that like controls it. Right. That's like this shit know. needs to be regulated as fuck. Mm-hmm. I agree. Anyways, on that positive that note, positive note guys. guys, we are at the end of the episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Mm-hmm. If you are listening or watching on YouTube, make sure you thumbs up this video. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Comment down below in the YouTube video. Any comments you have, mm-hmm. any questions, any concerns, any whatever, your thoughts on any yeah. of these stories. Make sure you follow us on any podcast platform that you're listening on. Yep. Make sure you give us a little rating. Five stars always helps a lot. Yes. What else, Daniels? And of course, guys, if you're not already, check out our Patreon page, patreon.com slash the savage podcast. We do exclusive content every single month. You'll get access to our full exclusive library over the last like five years, four years, yeah. however long it's been. Um, also, all the content on there is ad free and you get episodes a week earlier than the, everyone else. And it's just a fun space over there. So check it out yeah. at patreon.com slash the savage podcast. And it's only $3 a month, which is cheaper than most things at the grocery store. This is true. Uh, 
true. This so is true. So check it out, you guys. And thank you so much for listening. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye.